Hey there, it's Jen Scow, and I'm here to show you a hybrid layout using the fabric story kit from Allie Edwards. So I'm using both the story kit and, or the digital kit and the physical kit. So what I did was I pulled open a bunch of circles and now I pulled up the like little preview of all of the items and I'm gonna use the colors on that to color these circles. So I'm just picking up the eyedropper tool and filling in the colors and I actually the ones that aren't stamps the ones that are embellishments you have to fill using the paint bucket but the ones that are stamps you can fill another way and I'll show you that in just a second because that's how I do the last one so here you can see I'm just grabbing colors with my little color picker tool there and I'm just filling in these lines and this is a, really a um, like a mossy green color, but it, when I print it out, it ends up looking a little bit more gray. My uh, printer needs new ink, I think, but. All right, so here's this circle with the chevron down the middle, and I'm doing that one in blue. Just being careful to get those last edges. And then this is a, a digital stamp. So what I can do for this one is grab my color, and then I'm gonna go up to well, here I am choosing the color. I wanted to do it gray. So I'm gonna go to edit, fill, and then make sure foreground color is chosen, and then it will change it to whatever color you have on top over at the left. So that went ahead and changed it to gray. And now I just need to throw these onto a canvas. Uh, I'm gonna choose an eight and a half by 11 paper, and then I'm gonna throw the circles on and I'm just gonna resize them a bit because they're gonna be way too big. So I'll, drag them all on and then I'll decide exactly how I want to do them. So these three circles I am printing on um, photo paper because the colors pop better on photo paper. Uh, the other one I'm going to print on a patterned paper. So here I'm just kind of adjusting the sizes. They don't need to be any specific size. I just want them to be kind of different. And I actually realized later that these would all fit on a five by seven and I have five by seven paper. So I did that. Okay, so you can see here I have my circles um, printed and I printed the pieces of joy on a uh, patterned paper and I plan to punch at least one more circle out of this so that there's more than just one piece that has a pattern. And then I printed these, <clears throat> these circles that I showed you, how I filled the different colors. And then after I printed my photo, I just kind of realized that this felt very cool with this. I don't know, it, it wasn't, that gray wasn't working for me, so I printed it again in this kind of light green color, which I think is good, and it matches this blue color pretty well. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I was thinking of was putting my journaling on a circle like this, but my brown blanket, I feel like, is way more cool, and this is a little bit more warm, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a circle out of this particular card, and I don't have a punch this size, so I'm just using a die. But I think when I cut it out like this, you can still see that it says threads. And then I'm just going to type on my typewriter below it. So what I'll do is I'll cut this out, and then I will um, put this on a piece of paper so that it can easily go through my typewriter because the circle won't write. And, so, and then I'll type right there. Unless I get the urge to keep my to make my journaling handwriting, but I've... I'm thinking on this one I want to type it out. So I'll come right back after okay, that. So you can see I type I typed this all up on this little card. I actually had one more sentence I might have wanted to add, but uh, I ran out of room. So that's okay though. Um, but you can see I just taped it down onto this piece of paper so I could feed it through. And uh, now this piece is ready to go. Uh, I have not cut these out yet. I forgot to do that. So I'll do that. But the other thing I want to do is I'm thinking I want to cut this into a circle. I'm a little bit worried about losing the texture of these blankets, um, but I don't know, it just feels like if everything else is a circle, it should be a circle. But I'm gonna do it last, and I'm gonna cut these out and see how they look when I spread them around. I also plan to add in some of the chipboard circles, so I'm working with the physical and the digital kits, right? And so I am going to um, incorporate some of these circles as well, and I was thinking possibly of incorporating some of the other cir circular elements that came in the kit. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna play with the placement and stuff like that and then decide if I want to uh, use this picture as it is or cut it into a circle. Okay, so this particular circle had an outline on it, but I was just showing you that I cut it off because none of the other circles have an outline. 
and I like the way that color matches, but my, um, my other circle was not the right color, so I printed the green one. And actually, I won't even end up using that one. So here I'm just kind of playing around with the placement a little bit, and I realize that this is going to be, uh, the photo needs to be a circle. So what I've done is I cut my circle into, or my photo into a circle, and then I punched some more circles out of the pattern cards in the uh, physical kit, although you could do it, you could print them from the digital kit as well. And I'm just going to spread around the colors and I'm pointing a lot because I actually did this in real time at first, but then it was way too long with the fiasco that happens later. <laughs> You'll see that. Uh, so I just ended up voicing it over. So I'm just trying to get a good balance of color here and punching out different circles and trying to do that. So I like the way that the circle looks when you put it, or the little circle heart looks when you put it onto another pattern. And so I'm just punching these little hearts out of that pattern circle card or I keep saying circle, that patterned heart card, and I'm punching circles out of it, and I'm gonna do three circles. So I like to do things in threes, and so I'm gonna make sure I have three of the hearts, and I'm gonna make sure I have three of each icon, uh, or not icon, color, uh, and you'll see me kind of make that happen. So now I'm just trying to decide on some final placement, and I decided I, I had this dark green color which I wanted to bring in, but it was too plain, and so I decided to just stamp the date on it. And I just stamped the month and year because it doesn't matter exactly the date. And I did it with Versamark ink so I could emboss it, and it's gonna be white. So it will match that circle at the top, that chipboard circle, because it has white printing on a green background. So I just heat that up with my heat tool, and there it is, I think that looks good. And I'm just making the circles cascade from the left to the right in a diagonal. Now I cut off two uh, half inch strips from each side of the paper. And what I wanna do is mat this paper on a different, like a, a patterned paper. Because I feel like it's just really white and really plain. And even though there's pattern going on in the circles, I just wanted there to be just a little bit something more. So I will find a patterned paper and put those on it eventually. So I know I wanna pop some of these circles up, but I wanna stitch on a bunch of them too. So what I'm doing right now is gluing down all the circles that I know I want to stitch down that are not going to be popped up. And then I will take it over to my sewing machine and stitch on all of those, and then I'll do the popped up versions. So you can see that the circles, I've overlapped some of them, and some of them are just off to the side by themselves. I like to have that variety there. I'm gonna pop the photo up, so I'm making sure to put that down. And I don't know if I mentioned before, but I decided that those burlap circles uh, were a good addition, even though they were warm, and I said I didn't want warm at the beginning. So. Um, just putting these down and then the circles with the hearts I glued those directly down because what I want to do is stitch through the middle and then kind of pop up the circle and you'll see that in a little bit so I just this uh, circle I knew I wanted to add at the top and bottom so I just glued it at the top trimmed it off and now I'm putting that trimmed edge down at the bottom so there's three places where that occurs as well and I just pulled over my sewing machine I keep it right out on my desk and I'm going to stitch these all and I'll come back and show you how it looks in just a second okay so now you can see I have everything stitched down I want to kind of show you up close how this ended up looking so on the diagonal lines I stitched in between some of the white lines I stitched an X through this so it kind of looks like a button just a little bit of stitching here and on these ones I'll show you in just a second I stitched these right down the middle because I want to pull the sides of the hearts up and then I just stitched across on this and on the um, blue ones, or blue, these uh, burlap. What I was trying to say was these burlap circles, which I decided to add. So now I'm gonna put down the items that I wanna pop up. And actually I decided to do some stitching on the popped up pieces as well. So you, the circle has the stitching around it and now I'm just putting some foam adhesive on the back. I like to use this fun foam because it's cheap and I like to use a lot so that nothing has the risk of falling down later in my album. I had that little tape dispenser I was showing you, that's from the Target Dollar Spot, and it's so cute. And I always use tape, uh, like washi tape on the back of, to pull my threads through to secure them on the back of my layouts, and so I decided to put that on on my desk like that, and I think it's cute. Anyway, so now I'm just, again, gluing stuff down, and I'm trying to decide, I. I decided I wanted some of the strings to hang, which I do every once in a while, but I haven't done for a long time. And 
because this is all about fabric and threads of our lives and stuff like that, I decided I wanted to uh, have some of the strings showing. So I'm just kind of deciding which ones I want to show and then taping down the rest and uh, putting it down on the layout. So I just got a small piece of foam for that one. I'm just gonna pop it up and I tr tried to make it so that it was at an angle where those could hang down and look nice. And I'm just putting a tiny bit of foam on the edge of this chipboard piece because it's laying on top of the burlap. And now I'm taking my finger and running it along the edge of my white cardstock, which I stitched down to that background. That's from a super old pink, or yeah, pink paisley. Um, I think it's called Color Splash or something. Um, and it just had the perfect colors. So it's really a simple pattern in the background. So now I decide I want to add some mist. And so I'm looking through my little swatches to figure out what colors I need and grabbing them from my little stash of mists that is against my wall there. And this is where things start to go horribly, horribly wrong. <laughs> um, I just wanted, this was gonna be my finishing touch, just a little bit of sprinkling here and there. And I think it looks nice. It just gives it a little bit more interest and it makes it not so white, but just wait for it. Here it comes. No! So I sound like a dinosaur, right? Let's watch that one more time. No! That was so awful. So what I did was I took a wipe and I just dabbed as much of that color off as I could. And then I used the wipe to stamp it around because I thought, well, this got there, so maybe I can make it look like it was supposed to be like that. And it just looks messy. And so I had to call upon the powers of Missy Whitten. <laughs> and she does mixed media a lot on her backgrounds. And I do sometimes too, but not unintentionally. And so what I decided to do was to try to fix this with some gesso and then I'll do some paint splatters. So now I'm just still putting on the pink uh, spray mist because I haven't decided that I want to do that yet. And I'm just trying to like keep it together <laughs> because I was so upset that that happened and I didn't want to redo it because I'm just a little bit lazy like that. So I pulled out some gesso and I'm using my finger to rub it onto the page and I'm just rubbing it on where all of those paint splotches are that I added and you can still see them but they're light and I'm going to also do it on this huge spot that left me a giant mess <laughs> on the top left hand side and so at this point I'm thinking I can do a few coats of gesso and then I'll make the <laughs> the splatters look intentional so I just add some mist to some uh, water some water to some mist on some packaging and I'm using my paintbrush and I'm just going to kind of go in fill this in and make it look like I meant to have those paint splotches all along and then I freaking touched my finger to the bottom of the layout I was so mad um, at this point because now that's not at least at least the other one was close to my where all of my focus was down the middle but that little stupid <laughs> fingerprint that I left at the bottom is by nothing and it's really awkward so I will end up covering it up as well as I can with some gesso as as well but it was out of control I couldn't even handle how <laughs> I couldn't handle this layout it was it was rough I mean you know I made it work and I didn't want to do it again because I'm really lazy like that so I, I always try to make things work when I can so I'm adding a little bit of pink mist and before I did some some navy which because it's on top of the gesso it's really light and I kind of like that so it brings in another um, like another version of the blue color. It's just a lighter version and I think that looks nice. So I'm just again using my paintbrush to kind of squish it into those spaces so it looks like this was meant to be here all along and I put some of the gesso overlapping some of the circles too so that it made it feel like it was included. I don't know if that makes sense but um, so I'm just kind of playing around and trying to see what I can do here. I'm putting some gesso down on that stupid fingerprint <laughs> and, um, I'm just going to keep doing this. I'm just going to keep filling the spaces in and, um, putting more gesso down where I feel like it went a little bit awry and 
I'll just uh, do that until I feel like it looks good. Now I do end up putting a little bit more gesso on those blue parts because I wanted to soften them up a little. Um, and I'm really impatient so I'm trying to get these to dry so I can add more pink because it's looking kind of muddy because the pink and the blue are gonna make kind of a dark purple color and that's not really the color I was going for. So uh, I'm just trying to be careful and make sure the blue parts dry before I put the pink next to it because I don't really want them to mix very much. And I'm just using that little paint brush to get in all those crevices. So I decided to reprint the pieces of Joy and I'm just gonna put it right on top of the other one. Now the other one has stitching on it and this is, um, this circle's a little bit bigger than the other one was, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add the stitching back to it before I glue it down. So I'm just um, doing a few lines of stitching above and below the phrase and then I'm going to add it to my layout underneath that photo there. And I'm gonna let some of these threads hang too, so I'm just kind of just deciding what ones are gonna hang and what ones are gonna be taped on the back. And then I will glue that piece to my background. Now, that mist takes a long time to dry. It's really soaked into the paper. Um, and so when I put the adhesive on, it's fine, but it's it doesn't stay as flat as all of the rest of the pieces do, all of the rest of the circles. And so I try to glue it down a little bit more with some um, some liquid adhesive there in my fine line bottle and it it just it doesn't hold it. it everything around it is just a little bit too wet and I'm so impatient like I couldn't even wait for this so I decided to put a little bit of gesso on top of that circle again so it looks like it's supposed to go like that and that all of that stuff was meant to be there and this is when I kind of decide that that blue is a little bit too dark and I'm going to put more gesso over the top of that um, blue color. I just wanted to soften it up a little bit. It just, I don't want it to stand out. I just want it to add to it, which I didn't want that in the first place, right? This was a mistake, but um, I think in the end it turns out okay. Missy, if you're watching this, please tell me it's okay <laughs> because your layouts are always so beautiful, but it's this, this style is a little bit tricky for me. I do like to do a little bit of mixed media and I do a lot of splattering with, with mists, but Man, oh man, this gave me some trouble. So again, I'm just gonna fiddle around a bit. And now I decide to take some of the word strip stickers that came in the physical kit. Um, there is a digital version of the, these as well. And I'm gonna put a few down on all of the burlap pieces. And so uh, I go ahead and, and choose a few that kind of go along with, with this uh, story or whatever. And I just put one at the top, one at the bottom, and two in the middle, which I usually like things in threes, but I decided it was okay to not do that. So now I am just going to pull up those hearts like I said I wanted to. So I'm just pulling them up so that the middle the middle of them is stitched down. So they're just uh, kind of have a little bit of dimension. And I realized, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that there, but um, I realized that the dots disappeared when I put the gesso on top, so I needed to add more little splatters there. And I tried to shake up my pink mist and it wasn't closed all the way and I spilled it. So that was awesome. Just everything was going wrong. So just adding back those splatters over the gesso so that everything looks good. Well, everything looks like it's supposed to be there. And that's pretty much gonna finish the layout. Okay, so I'm done with this now, this mess. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I spilled almost twice. Um, but I wanted to show you, sorry, I'm putting my, my mists away because I do not want them getting anywhere else. That was a nightmare. Um, but I wanted to show you, I punched a, a circle out of this journaling card um, and it's kind of right on the edge, but I just wanted to show you how cute it looks if you do it on purpose and then you can pop a little chipboard circle in there or something. Um, I maybe wouldn't do words on this particular one because there's lots of words going on, but I just think that would be cool. So I just wanted to say that and uh, thanks so much for watching and I hope you'll come back soon. If you wanna find out more about these story kits, head over to AllieEdwards.com and I will leave a link in the video description. Again, thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great week.